Hey everyone, Dr. Crayhay here. In this Chapter 5 lecture, I'll be discussing reliability, including test retest, inter-rater, and internal. So this slide shows a concept map provided by your textbook author that kind of lays out the whole idea of uh, validity and reliability. So you can see up there at the top we have our different kinds of validities, uh, which will be in a later lecture video. Uh, and then we also have this area in the red, which is what I'll talk about uh, right now. So reliability. In general, do you get consistent scores every time? And there are three different ways to look at that. Test, retest, inter-rater, and internal. So I'll focus on that in this lecture. Well, about testing this, uh, we could have test, retest, reliability. So say that I give you an IQ test right now, uh, and then I give you that same IQ test in a week or so. If that test is to have test retest reliability, you should score about the same both times, given that nothing substantial changes within you. Um, so test retest upon different administrations of the measurement or the test, are you getting consistent scores? Inter-rater reliability is again looking for consistency of scores, but this time you have two different raters doing the scoring. Um, so I've used this quite a bit in some of my qualitative research, so that's some of my um, text-based research. So I'll ask people, uh, you know, describe uh, what you were doing before you heard the news about 9-11 or something like that. Uh, so they provide all of this text and they just walk me through their day, right? And so I'll have two trained coders, uh, usually two students that I'm working with. Uh, they will go through and, and read these and they'll do some kind of coding. So maybe we're looking at the degree to which um, people make uh, unsure statements. So the, the amount of times that people use words like maybe or they have some kind of ambiguous tone to show that they weren't quite sure. So I'll have two people go through and rate how many times that happens. Well, my two raters should agree. They should have very similar, if not exact, numbers. Um, so inter just means between, rater, of course you have two people rating it. So your two raters, sometimes more than two, should agree on those ratings. Internal reliability has to do more with how well the questions in a measure kind of group together. Um, so say that I have some kind of test on happiness. I believe your textbook uses happiness as an example. Um, and I have five questions on that. All of those five questions should be about some component of happiness, and a happy person should respond in similar ways across all five of those questions. An unhappy person similarly should respond uh, the same way in a consistent way across all five of those questions. So internal reliability is really looking at the different components of the test of the measure and if you're saying this looks at happiness, how well are people responding consistently? Um, you know, is, uh, you know, are you getting really crazy? Sometimes you're getting a strongly agree, sometimes you're getting a strongly disagree. How well are those scores grouping together? A couple of questions that we'll need to consider. When is each kind of reliability necessary? Um, so test, retest, and internal reliability will both be in a case typically where um, it's self-report data. So we have um, undergraduate students participating in a survey or we have community members participating in a survey. Um, test, retest, and internal are, are really great there. Uh, Inter-rater reliability will typically be in a case where the researchers are coding data. Um, of course, there are exceptions to, to these kinds of guidelines, but in general, different circumstances pull out different reliabilities. Why is reliability an empirical question? So we can measure all of this with data, right? So um, we'll talk about this in the next few slides, but you can run what's called a correlation, which we've talked a little bit about, but we'll talk more about later in the course, uh, to see how well these numbers kind of go together. We can get one single number of that. We can do some scatter plots to see visually how well they fall together. So it's we're using data to answer 
these questions. And then, of course, what does reliability tell us? I've already told you that in general, in general, uh, reliability is saying, you know, overall, do you get consistent scores every time? So hopefully in every published article you come across, you'll find some kind of reliability information that should always be reported. So here's one example uh, of a study that is reporting two different kinds of reliability. We have internal consistency. So again, how similar is the responding across different questions in a scale? Uh, temporal reliability, they're just using a fancy way of saying test retest. Uh, for the satisfaction with life scale. So I'll go through this table in just a second, but first let me point out that um, these are all, uh, they're basically correlation coefficients, and so correlation coefficients can go from negative one to positive one, with zero falling right in the middle there. So a zero would indicate no relationship. A negative one and positive one, they're two sides of a perfect relationship. So it doesn't matter if it's a negative one or a positive one, those are equally strong relationships and actually it would be a perfect relationship. So you want a number that's closer to one, um, that's going to indicate higher reliability, uh, more consistency across measurements, across people, um, across different test items, whichever reliability you're using. So you want that um, as close to one as possible. Some people will say above 0.7 is good, others say above 0.8. Um, just know that there is a cutoff, closer to one is better, and then if you take statistics uh, you'll get into that in more detail. So what we're looking at here, uh, we have a couple of different samples, so we have different articles. An article from Alfonso and Alice in 1992A, and that next column you have coefficient alpha, which is your internal consistency. Again, how well do the items on that test, how well is the responding similar? So how well are those kind of hanging together? Test retest, and then the temporal interval. So uh, you come in and I have you take this test today, and then I'm gonna have you come back in two weeks. How well do those two scores line up with each other. Going down a row to that next study, the temporal interval is one month, so I have you come in today, and then a month later you take the same exact test, and then we can see our test retest reliability score. Um, so that's what this table is telling you. This is how it should be reported. Um, oftentimes they'll report it in text, with, which is fine too, um, but always be on the lookout for this kind of information um, in published articles. So remember, inter-rater reliability is looking at the ability of two separate raters to get consistent ratings. So whether they're, um, they're going through and they're coding qualitative data or um, maybe they're measuring behavior, whatever's going on, we want our two separate raters to have very similar ratings. And so here we're using a scatter plot, actually a couple of scatter plots to evaluate uh, the inter-rater reliability. So here we have uh, on the left here we have observer marks ratings uh, on the x-axis, which is the, the bottom one there. On the y-axis we have observer mats ratings, and uh, then on the right there you can see we're just doing uh, Mark and Peter's ratings. So starting with the example A, so we have Matt and Mark rating. You can see that those dots are lining up really, really closely to, to each other. If this green line wasn't here and I asked you to draw it, you would probably draw something very similar because there's a clear pattern. That's going to indicate a pretty strong correlation and this is strong evidence for inter-rater reliability. Uh, that correlational coefficient or alpha will be very close to a one. Looking over here to the right at B, uh, Peter and Mark, this is uh, less consistent. Um, so they have pretty divergent scores here. Um, you could see, uh, you know, if you're just looking at those dots, it's really hard to pick out a clear linear relationship. Again, if the green line wasn't there and I asked you to draw it, it would be really difficult for us to all come up with the same or at least very similar line. That's going to be evidence for um, a lack of reliability. I would be concerned um, 
because we have previous experience with Mark and we know that he has really good reliability uh, with a different coder, I would be concerned with Peter's training on coding. And so that's what I would probably do as a researcher. I would go back and retrain Peter and ask him to redo those codings. Um, Inter-rater reliability is something that you can work towards uh, and a solid training protocol, solid coding rules uh, are one or a couple of ways to start moving towards that. So we can evaluate this with scatter plots like we've done here. We can do it with correlation and alpha coefficients like we did in the last table. Uh, but in any case, these reliabilities are very, very important. So make sure as you're beginning your annotated bibliography, uh, keep an eye out for this. If people report it, make note of it and try to make sense of, um, you know, are these measures that they're using, do they have evidence of reliability or not? Okay, so I told you about internal reliability already. So again, how similarly are people responding across different questions? So here we have five different questions. Um, how well does the answer to question one line up with question two, question one with question three, question one with question four. So it's all of those different pairwise comparisons. You're getting a correlation which is what I mentioned before. Uh, I just wanted to point out quickly, uh, Chromebacks Alpha, which is what you'll typically see reported, uh, is an average of all of those possible uh, pairwise comparisons or item total correlation. So it's still essentially the same thing as a correlation. So if you understand that, just interpret it through that lens. And for the purposes of this course, and then through your statistics, undergraduate statistics course, uh, you will be well on your way to understanding these very complicated concepts.